I guess like maybe maybe just Greg to have you kind of meditate on you know there's there's some corners of the internet which sort of which are convinced that AI is this like you know potentially industrial revolution level uh, step change and uh, I think there is there is baked into that a fear that like if China figures out AI faster or better than um, uh, the, the U.S. does and the kind of balance of forces um, could change very dramatically and very quickly in a way in which uh, the, the conversation we've had for the last 15 minutes could potentially lead the U.S. to um, to not uh, or the Defense Department in particular to not kind of adapt to quickly, quickly enough to sort of reap the benefits. Um, any thoughts, reflections on that? Um, on that narrative and and maybe that might lead us into a broader conversation on the sort of like bureaucratic agility that you uh saw and and witnessed over the past few years my mental model for how is ai going to play out over the next decade and over the next decades after that my sort of primary frame of reference is the adoption of computers um so you know alan turing in world war ii uh, and the team at Bletchley Park come up with this first sort of digital programmable computer. And uh, it's a really big deal in national security because it can break the German Enigma codes. That's what computers are doing in 1946, right? But if you fast forward five decades, there's basically no part of military technology that is not taking advantage of computers at some point in the value chain, whether it's um, you know, a system that has a computers running the aircraft autopilot or whether it's a, you know, explosive that was simulated and designed on a computer, even though it doesn't have any computers in it now. Um, I think there's, that's a pretty helpful frame of reference and analogy, uh, for artificial intelligence right now, right this second, artificial intelligence has some really important military applications that the DOD is taking advantage of, um, including in intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance, um, and other areas. But over the next few decades, I think we should expect AI to play an increasingly critical role in just about every area of military technology. Um, in terms of what the stakes of that are, Yes, I think there are plausible scenarios, right, in which the United States gets it wrong and loses, uh, you know, this competition, which, by which I mean, right, we lose our military technological edge. The U.S. technological edge, in terms of relative superiority, has eroded tremendously um, over the past few decades. That's not an opinion. That's basically a fact. And it's actually stated explicitly um, in, in the national defense strategy of the United States. Um, that's not, it's not a huge surprise, right? Back in 97, uh, the Chinese military budget was only twice that of Taiwan's military budget. You know, today, uh, the Chinese military budget has increased by, I can't remember if it was tenfold or twentyfold, but some incredible multiplier over that. And our budget has not increased tenfold. So it would kind of be surprising if we hadn't lost our military edge uh, in some way. Um, but the erosion has really sort of reached this tipping point where now like absolute superiority in military technology is at risk. Um, and the United States has always relied upon a qualitative edge in military technology, you know, at least since uh, the second half of the, the 20th century. And China's, as I said, China's commercial AI ecosystem in many ways is, is a global leader. Um, and China's military has undertaken a really incredible series of reforms, you know, over the past 10, 15 years or so um, that have made them stronger and better in a lot of different ways. So. If the Department of Defense fails to reform, it is totally possible that we would lose our, our military technology edge. And my organization, the, the Joint AI Center, um, was stood up, right, in, in part to be more agile, to move faster in accelerating the adoption of, of AI. And, you know, the DOD has even now announced, you know, more reforms in, in the same direction with the office of the chief digital and AI officer. You know, you were talking about, like, with the AI, we want to kind of get to, we're, we're starting with ISR, you know, predictive maintenance, this type of stuff. And you're saying like, you know, the next couple of decades, you know, maybe we'll get to, to uh, you know, more autonomous lethality type things. 
Uh, but do we have that amount of time, right? Like China is kind of moving fast. We have like all these systems, like the next generation um, fighter will be 2030, the next generation unmanned or optionally unmanned vehicle 2030. The, act the Navy's new 30 year shipbuilding plan actually has fewer vertical launch systems, fewer ships um, through the 2020s, but it feels like the 2020s is gonna be the dangerous decade potentially. Do, do we need to like accelerate those timelines? Is that just like too conservative? Because everything I see coming out of DOD is like 2030 and beyond will have, you know, maybe some of these potential systems, maybe, right? Optionally unmanned, but not really, you know, autonomous or unmanned. No, I, I think you're totally right. And I would say that part of the, the, the trap that the Department of Defense has fallen into from its technology paradigm perspective is that there's been an overemphasis on what you might call expensive, exquisite systems. So these are, you know, like the aircraft carriers, which cost tens of billions of dollars per ship, or um, the most advanced, you know, aircraft, which cost uh, maybe like $500 million per aircraft. You know, there are aircraft that cost that much. Um, and what's great about these systems is that they have, you know, phenomenal performance uh, in, across the ton of different metrics. But when your system is that large, that expensive, that complicated, it really frustrates your pace of innovation because you can't afford to play fast and loose with systems that cost $10 billion. And that's why what I'm hoping will occur uh, and what I'm rooting for is for the Department of Defense to sort of learn from what's going on in Ukraine, where the drones that are having the biggest impact are cheap. Um, and in many cases, right, are lightly repurposed commercial off the shelf uh, types of technologies. You can go through, um, you know, many dozens of cycles of iteration uh, that doesn't have to take, you know, 10 years between one aircraft generation to the next. But you can only do that if these things are cheap and you can afford, right, to, to take a lot of risks as you're developing them. Um, and I think AI and especially what's coming out of the commercial AI sector and the commercial autonomy sector offers a path towards that new and improved pace of innovation. And it is certainly the case uh, that, that China will jump on that new innovation track um, if the United States fails to.